Hello everyone, uh, my name is Alex Sanovitsky and I just made this short video to answer a question I was asked by Lou Elizondo last Saturday during a podcast. But before we get started, just make sure to like, share, subscribe, and uh, hit that notification bell. Let me ask you, if I may, because this is one of the, the you know, we now see scientists and, and physicists such as yourself and, and, and astrophysicists and Avi Loeb and some other individuals. There's actually some academic institutions now that are actually starting a curriculum on this. How do we break down the barrier for the academic and scientific communities to look at a topic that has been historically so associated with with stigma, taboo, pseudoscience, yeah. and, and and look at something, um, you know, fair-minded, objective, and logically. Um. So to answer this question, I'd like to read a section from The Infinite Pool of Experience and Awareness, and this comes from The Crystal of Time. And so we say, perspectives grow with senses. Every sense is used to construct a mental environment that allows the user to interact and survive. Sit quiet and explore your senses. What is it to feel? What is it to taste, to hear, to smell, and to see? What is it to have an experience in time? What is it to be aware? What is this thing we call consciousness? Each sense adds to the user's experience within reality and stems from a grander and grander picture of existence. Each one comes from revolving around or being inside of something greater. Let us be the most primitive being you can imagine, completely senseless. We would think reality didn't even exist. Now let's scale up this in evolution in an educated fashion. Let us compare the range of senses and physical distance and the median it is tuned to with the greater picture involved. So you could say the most primitive sense is our ability to feel. Single-celled organisms have cell walls that allow for endocytosis. It is our most primitive awareness when it comes to how we describe traditional life. This sense is literally within the global realm of physical contact. You could say the distance is zero meters for the ability to communicate and understand existence. What does the sense of zero meters and ability do for us? It lets us know that we are touching something. It lets us know that something exists besides us. The very best mental image we could either have is wall or no wall. Let us now combine the sense of taste into one category. They are essentially, essentially sensing the same thing anyway, which would be the structure of molecules and if they will be harmful or helpful to bring into the body. This lets us know that different types of structures exist. The range, again, is directly associated with touch. You must physically interact with a molecule in order to perceive a mental stimulus of some sort. You could say the distance for the sense of, of smell ranges from zero meters to many kilometers. The kilometer distance would come from molecules being carried by wind, but from the perspective of the being, they would not be aware of the origin. The effective distance is zero. So now we get wall, no wall, taste good, and taste bad. Sound could be considered our first awakening. It gives us the feeling of vibration and allows us to be able to detect direction. Sound or primitive feeling may be the first hint that there is motion. The mind or consciousness would be able to detect the Doppler shifts in vibratory frequency. It is the first hint towards varying velocities of matter and distance. Sound will not travel from beyond the earth. All four, feeling, smell, taste, and sound, let us know we are on something bigger. There is an environment in which to grow, the earth. Our next sense would be vision, which is, sense, which is centered around the color yellow. The concept of seeing through visible yellow light is a very earthly thing. It is directly related to the sun's maximum wave of output, which is the color yellow. In other words, we most likely would not be tuned to or even have eyes if the sun didn't exist. 
This ability to see through electromagnetism would be our next big jump in self-awareness and conscious evolution. We can now see. There is color to the noises we heard and felt. We have a new sense of awareness. We can see to the edge of the universe and to the illusionary beginning of time. Similarly to how we can see to the source of sound and to the illusionary location of manifested objects. Our awareness has now shifted to encompass the entire universe, or at least to the smooth cosmic microwave background. Our environment in which to grow has increased to the entirety of the known universe, or rather, limitations of aided visual perception. However, to say that is all would not be to understand how our senses have been developing. We are all one awareness, coming from the more primitive single cell. In a fashion, we are one being, becoming more aware. Now let us explore our sense of time and compare the now to the visual spectrum. Could not the past and future physically still exist just like longer and shorter wavelengths of sound and light than our now may perceive? Either way, one thing is for certain. We do see and experience time. We are in time. Just like the universe, just like the solar system, just like the planet Earth, we are in or on time. We revolve around the center of time. The flowing nature of past, present, and future is a limitation to our perception and cognitive ability. We are, however, orbiting and flowing through the crystal of time.